Gutierrez. Welcome to Etoxic Tea Lounge. Everything in this video is allegedly. Let's talk. So today we are going to be talking about a little sprinkle of some Cardi B. Okay, this is just something that I just want to talk about. Um, it's quick. Um, and we're also going to be talking about um Nicki Minaj's podcast with Joe Budden and Funny Marco. Okay, so we're going to be discussing that. Um, and a sprinkle of some Holly Bailey. Okay, and we're going to be talking about some stuff. So at the end of the day, let's get straight into it. All right, so the first thing that we're going to start with was Cardi B. Okay, we're going to start with Cardi B. Now, she is appreciative to her Barty gang. They gave her a, a book that's dedicated to her and her success and everything else. And they gave her, they made like little letters in the book. And I feel like that's very cute. I feel like that's very, a genuine um gift, a genuine gift. And I feel like she appreciates it. Okay. So she loves, this is how she appreciates and speaks about her fan base. Okay. Uh, we're going to just put up the video and I want y'all to let me know how y'all feel about the Barty Gang book that they gave her for Christmas. So I don't know how Bardigan got my address, but they did. And look what they did. They sent me a beautiful ass Christmas gift. And um, this book costs money. Like this, y'all y'all spent a good penny on this. Shit. This shit cost like probably like four or five hundred dollars. They took their time and they wrote me letters telling me how much they love me. And it's a lot of pages. But look at the quality of this book. Like, I'm really blown away. Look at this. This costs money. And um, it's crazy because I don't even know how most of my fans look. But I know how they, who they are just by their names. They tweet Twitter names and they headers. <sighs> look how beautiful. I know this. I know who's this. This for my... From Alex from Asia. I love her. I love her down. Look how beautiful is this book. I love y'all so much. Like, I love you. All right. So, the book looks really good. Like, the quality of the book is really good. So, I feel like Barty Gang did a great job. Okay. I know that they wanted to do something, you know, for her because she has been in a down spirit lately. She has a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, most of us can, you know, we are all human beings. So, most of us can relate about stress and life obstacles. And I'm pretty sure she has it the worst because she is a celebrity. And um, the internet is a crazy place. Okay. But... I just felt like Cardi B, um, you know, she's going through stuff with Offset. Do not, you know, they're separated right now. Do not know if they're going to finally get a divorce or what that conversation's about. That could be a very touchy and a very, like, a problematic thing in somebody's life, okay? Um, they share children together and all types of stuff. So I know that's going to be something that's going to be heavy, like, on her heart. OK, um, and me personally, I think that they was a cute couple. All right. They, they their marriage was good that we, we could we could see and feel the love from them. Um, but, you know, sometimes things happen and things just don't work out and m m gotta move on. But I just felt like this book right here put her in a good space um, because you could tell by her energy that she really appreciated the book and what her fans did for her. Um, and. At the end of the day, it's something that they did from their heart. It's not something materialistic as in, oh, let me just do this for money and this for money and this for money. Like, you know, as far as helping her with her records and stuff like that, like like most people do for their um faves. But this is something that was from the heart. And I feel like she should be in a better space, hopefully by 2024, and hopefully come out with her own music, not just features. I really want to see Cardi B embrace her, you know, because she is an artist and she's very talented. So I just feel like she needs to, you know, give the internet uh, a little time out and be more, you know, focused on her and music-wise, being a parent and figuring stuff out over there and not always coming on the internet because the internet is always going to try to bash her, try to, you know, do all the extra stuff, especially with the barbs and the Barty gang going back and forth. It's always going to be a back and forth war on the internet. Um, So I feel like she should just take a break from the internet since it's something that she stresses about a lot okay um that's all i really got to talk about that let me know how, how y'all feel about the book in the comments below 
Now we're going to talk about Holly Bailey, okay? Now, the clip that I'm about to show you, let me know the first thought that comes to your head when you see this, okay? And then I'm going to let y'all know how I feel and how everybody else is trying to, um, you know, um, trying to say what it is. So let's get straight into the video clip. Fall apart. Don't fall apart. Don't fall apart. Okay, y'all. So let me know how y'all feel about it. And me personally, she looks like she's in like some type of discomfort, like getting up. She looks like she's in some type of pain, discomfort, or something's going on. <laughs> what the heck is this? What is this? Yeah. Um, in my opinion. Now the internet is saying that she had the baby. Cause remember the baby um was definitely a rumor. She's been wearing really baggy things, things that, you know, can hide a pregnancy. A lot of people um, you know, carry small. You know, it's people out here that look like they still have flat stomachs or a little pudge and they they give birth and don't even know they was pregnant. Um, so anything is possible. I don't feel like Holly or DDG is obligated to express to the whole world that they're pregnant or trying to conceive or anything of, of that matter. They seem like they're trying to be private about it. And Holly seems like she is a private person. And I do not blame her because the Internet, as y'all see, they're already spreading rumors, making things up and all type of stuff, trying to put two and two together, looking for the clues, blues, clues and all type of stuff. So at the end of the day, it is what it is. I mean, that's the Internet for you. OK, and especially. Especially if you're a celebrity, people are going to fish. People are going to look for things and people are going to spread rumors. That's just what it is. If you personally put your stuff out there in your business, be mindful of what you're trying to put out there. Because if it's something that's sensitive and very private and stuff like that, keep that to yourselves, okay? But, yeah, to me, I don't know if she had a baby. I don't know if she was pregnant. I don't know none of that, okay? We only going by what we see on the internet. It didn't come out her mouth or DDG mouth um, that they was pregnant. Yeah, we seen clues, hints there and there and there. Like I said, blues clues, where are you? Finding Waldo. That's basically what that was given. But, like I said, receipts is a good thing, especially when it comes from the person's mouth, OK, remember that wobble video when she was wobbling and people were like, oh, yeah, that's the pregnancy walk. So right now people are like, OK, she had the baby because a lot of females are like, I know what that. Um, but that um, getting up after pregnancy or after pushing out a baby or maybe she had a C-section if she even had a baby. We don't know. But to me, she seems like she's in some type of discomfort. So maybe I'm leaning a little bit more towards she had a baby. I don't know. <laughs> We don't know. It's a mystery, okay? But you can't hide something forever, okay? Especially not a celebrity. Paparazzi, everybody's around. Everybody's detectives on the internet, okay? You can't. Whatever's in the dark always comes to the light. Remember that, okay? Now, we're going to be just discussing some... First, I'm going to talk about the Funny Marco and Nicki Minaj um, interview. I just feel like she went exactly what was like the theme funny marco is a comedian you already know how his interviews is a little awkward a little funny that's just what it is so Nicki minaj i think she was just playing her part as like being her character being a comedian i don't know if she really watches funny marco's um interviews and his content and stuff like that or unless she was playing around because you know she claims that she's an actor and all type of stuff um but for the most part i just feel like Nicki. I don't know. I just feel like it should have been a little bit more, like, informative. You know, if you have Nikki on your stuff or any celebrity or whatever, I just feel like it should have a little bit more, like, some type of information or something. But it just, it was just, uh, I don't know, an awkward situation. Um... I don't know. I don't know if Nikki was in character or she really was just like really getting fed up. I don't know. She does look like she was playing and stuff like that. But knowing Nikki, we don't know because sometimes she could be goofy. Sometimes she could be serious, but playing or she could be seeming like she's playing, but she's really serious. So I don't know. OK, that is that's the problem when people when they. You think that they, because they play around too much or they think that they're saying that they're playing around. You think that they're playing around. They say, I don't know. But let me just get into 
some of these notes because y'all know I'm eating my notes. Okay, so it's called Nikki. Um, it's called Open Thoughts. Okay, I'm gonna give y'all my thoughts on it. Now, Nikki gives Marco a Pink Friday to perfume for his sister. Okay, um, people review on it, and the comments that I've been getting basically was like, it smells like the last one, just probably like in a different packaging. Okay. So, it's some mixed reviews on the perfume. Me, personally, I never uh, purchased any of her perfumes. Um, but let me know if y'all purchased Pink Friday 2 perfume. How do y'all like it? Um. Okay, so, I don't know what... She says she doesn't know what cash app means because she's rich. Okay? <laughs> and then later on, when they was doing their little skit or whatever, acting skit, Funny Marco ended up saying, so, what's your cash app? And she said, Onika, a mirage, or mirage, or whatever. And he was like, oh, so you do got a cash app. And she was like. So I don't know if she's just trying to play bougie. Because she always has been bougie. So I don't know if she even knows what a cash app means and stuff. Or she was trying to be funny. I don't know. Because she knows she gives off that bougie. I'm rich. I don't know what this is type stuff. So, um, And then the rival clip of... um. You know, uh, Marco spraying the perfume. So that clip was coming out. And he was just funny. Okay? Like, it was just funny to me. The acting scene was funny as hell. Both of them was funny. Okay? Not her saying, psh, psh, And he was like, okay, so you punched me. She was like, okay, but you wasn't, you know, you didn't react to my punches. And then they did it again. And then she said, psh, psh, And then he said, he ducked it. And she was like, oh, so you duck in my head. You're not even, you're not even. And then when she said, psh, psh, again, <laughs> he said, it was funny to me all right um all right so let's see let's see do y'all think that Nicki minaj actually watches funny marco videos let me know down in the comments below um i just felt like that was a short interview it was funny um it was supposed to it gave what it was supposed to give okay because funny marco is a comedian and it gave comedian right um, now let's just talk about the Joe Budden one, because I feel like that one, one was a little bit more serious, um, a little bit more into her music and how she's feeling and where she's at and stuff like that. And I just feel like she admitted to having writer's block at one point. She had a lot of stuff going on, um, but now she's saying she's in a good space. She's having fun with it. She's back in her, you know, I'm ready to put my music out. I'm ready to do this um, era. So I think that's a good thing. Um she seems very calm, all right? She got emotional talking about her dad. Um, and I definitely can relate to losing a parent, parents or whatever, because that's just something that you're never going to let go. It's always going to be here. Like, I'm an adult, and I lost my mom, I say, when I was, like, 17 or t 17 turning 18 or one of them. I was a teenager, and it still hits me to this day. So I understand where Nicki Minaj is coming from for – you know, losing a parent, that is something, that's like, it's just, it's just a different feeling, so I can definitely relate, um, on how she felt, or how she's feeling when it comes to losing her dad, and she basically explains the first song of her album is basically, like, a dedication to her dad and stuff like that. She did say that her son did see her dad on a FaceTime, but she, they never met an actual, like, person, and she really feels some type of way about that of her first son, her first child, not being able to even meet her dad, which was a big deal to her. And I understand where she's coming from from that. That's the type of thing that I like about Nicki Minaj, where she's vulnerable and let people in that can relate but once you know how to relate to somebody you can start seeing them in a different light but that does not change the fact that she still move how she move okay and maybe she moved like that for a reason i don't know but she said the roman voices and stuff you know her roman character her um roman persona she's saying she's not that comfortable with that but she says she does it or she will do it because she knows that her fans like the roman you know character um, but she's saying she's not really a big fan of the Roman things. No, she doesn't really, she doesn't really, you know, she's not comfortable with it like that no more. Um, let's see, Joe pointed out, um, all the husband married references in her album. And she says she noticed it, that she kept saying married, married, married. Um, but not everything pertained to him. That's basically what she's saying. So she like, if y'all listen to the album and y'all hear he, the gray sweatpants, whatever, it's not only about him. That's what she's saying. Okay. 
She said she appreciate all the features on her album. She said that they gave her their best. So everything that everybody that was on her album was supposed to be there. And she's excited and happy how everything turned out. Right. Beat Beat with 50 Cent, the remix that's going to be on Gag City, the deluxe. OK, she said she never even worked with him. She um hit him up last minute and you could tell it, that it was last minute. It sounded like a last minute thing. OK, I don't know how to explain it, but it just sound last minute with the 50 cent one. Um, it, But she said she had beat beat for years. OK, um, it seems like she had a lot of uh, the the tracks that she got on her album. Seems like it's a lot of ones that she already had that she just put on there and just added some features or whatever the case may be. Um. Also, how y'all feel about the song with 50? How y'all like that song? Let me know down in the comments below. Do you like 50 Cent Verse? Do you like that whole thing? And then she says she did the song with Monica and Keisha. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you like the Monica and Keisha um, song with um, Nicki Minaj? Now, Joe Budden brings up the Tory Lanez, not Iggy Bar, right? He said, explain it to me, because it seems like shade, right? But she never really explained, of course. I didn't think that she would really get into details and, like, who it was for and what she meant and stuff like that. She didn't do that. She basically was like, um, what do you think about it? And then he was like, he said something, whatever. So, basically, she didn't explain that. Then he said that, um, state your head, you know, because she be on station head with the barbs and stuff like that. And basically, he was like, something about a rant. She was ranting and stuff like that. And she said she be chilling with her barbs. Why people always eavesdropping? And he was like, it's always going to be people that's not barbs in, you know, those type of conversations. You know, because she's a celebrity. You're in station head. You're talking smack. You're talking whatever. You're, you're, it's not a private station head. You know what I'm saying? So anybody, especially bloggers and content creators and stuff like that, we going to be up in here. We going to be getting the tea. Um, but. She knows that not all the be you know not all of them be bars really watching. She knows that. All right, now Nikki said, um, "Rap is forty percent down." Okay, from females and rap, the rap is forty percent down. Now Joe said, "People said female rap is in the best space." Now she said, "If albums aren't selling, it starts going into the average pool numbers." Right? She basically saying the gate is open. A whole bunch of whack people are in the game, but she doesn't say no names. She said there's female and male rappers that are whack, that she thinks that is whack, all right? But then she says, don't let, don't, don't make me seem like I'm only talking about female rappers because she's, she basically was like, there is some female rappers now to the present day that she messed with, that she like inspired after hearing some of their bars and stuff like that. She's inspired by some of the female rappers that she personally know and that she get along with. But she like the rap female rappers that she do not get along with. If the shoe fit, it fit. You know what I'm saying? She basically saying it is what it is. Um, but then she said... She said her best spitters are some female rappers. So she she basically said that. Now, of course, she doesn't say names. She doesn't say who she think is, you know, out of her, you know, who's the best female spitters to her currently and all that. She doesn't go into all of that. She never does, really. Um, and then she said the female rapper, she was like, I don't want the female rappers that I'm cool with and personally know that she really messed with think that anything is targeting or towards them. That's what she's saying. She don't want to seem like she's bashing those female rappers. Okay. Um, so basically, and then I love the fact that she said when he said about the touring and stuff like that, is it going to be like a whole year or whatever? She like, it's not going to be like that. Um, She's going to basically try to proportion it out to have a balance because she is a mom and I like that about her because she's basically like, listen, I would take my breaks because I'm a parent first at the end of the day. And that is good. I feel like that's a good balance. I feel like work is never going to go anywhere, especially in her caliber. Like she's going to be making money while she's sleeping. It doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? So taking time out to be with her son and being a mother and doing motherly things. And, you know, I feel like that's very important. You got to have a balance with work and your children. That's just how it is. Um, because the children would definitely feel it if you're away and you never see your kids and stuff like that. And you just worried about a coin. We understand that life is nothing about, but money. You got to make a way. You got to do what you got to do because if else, who else is going to do it for you? Right. 
But you also got to understand that you have children, you are a parent, and you got to also balance. I don't care what nobody say. That's just how I am. Okay. But at the end of the day, that's everything that I needed to talk about. All right. Let me know down in the comments below, how do you feel about the interviews with Funny Marco and Joe Budden? Okay. Um, I actually really liked the Carsonette and her. Their energy was everything. Um, that was just a, a, a funny hee hee ha ha moment with the Carsonette situation i felt like um i don't know i just feel like it was a little tense in the joe bunny and nikki thing like he was laughing and stuff like that um but it's just the energy was just off a little bit to me all right because i know him and nikki have prior thing and then you know joe Budden is affiliated with cardi b in a way and stuff like that so i don't know about that dynamic but it was a little bit cringy a little bit of the energy was just a little bit off to me in my opinion all right but that's just me and how i feel about everything let me know how y'all feel about everything down in the comments below do you think that holly had the baby do you think that she ever was pregnant let me know down in the comments below and also last thing how do y'all feel about the Cardi B and her Barty gang giving her, gifting her that book with their personal letters and everything else, showing their appreciation for her? How do you, how do y'all feel about that? Um, but if there's anything that y'all would like for me to talk about, hit up Etoxic Tea Lounge, and y'all already know I got y'all. My opinions are just that I'm giving y'all that whatever that's on the internet and people talking about. And I'm going to give y'all my opinions, okay? Because my opinions is not like yours. It might be. We might be seeing eye to eye on some things and we might not, but it's okay. Okay. Life goes on. Don't take the internet serious like y'all be doing, especially for people that don't even know you exist. Okay. This is my content. I don't care if they know I exist or not. I'm still going to speak my opinions. It doesn't affect me not one way or another if they see it or if they don't at the end of the day. Okay. But anyway, I love y'all. Toodaloo. Gotta be.